Well, good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Always excited to be with you and to share the news with you. I have a, I found a fantastic piece, and it's titled What Democrats and Colonialists Have in Common. We're going to go through this, break it down just a little bit, but uh, before I get into it, real quick, MyPillow.com. Hey, where's the logo? There it is, MyPillow.com, promo code Lumberjack. Biggest sales going on right now. They're phenomenal. Mattress toppers are half off, the slippers are half off, and so on. All kinds of inventory reduction sale going on over at MyPillow.com with promo code Lumberjack. Um, so this out of the Washington Examiner, um, they have their Restoring America piece. And the title is What Democrats and Colonialists Have in Common. It's by Hugo Gordon. And this is so well done. The left preaches tolerance but excoriates those who disagree with it. It claims to seek equality or its conveniently and endlessly malleable derivative equity, which is much different than equality, folks. You guys know that, okay? But gives preferences unequally to favored groups. It brags that it's a passionate defender of democracy, but works to cancel legitimate votes by making it easier to cast bad ones. It arrogates science to its partisan causes, but rejects the facts of gender, abortion, genetically modified foods, the pandemic, economics, and much else. The list of hypocritical disparities stretches to somewhere over the rainbow. But one disparity is perhaps weirder and more glaring than all the others. It's on the issue the left, most of all, obsesses with, that of race. White gentry liberals who run the Democratic Party and lead its militant base are utterly out of sync with the racial minorities they claim to represent and insist they want to help. Now, I told you folks this before, but like my friend, he's a cop down in Minneapolis and during the riots down there, okay, the people who actually lived in those neighborhoods didn't want to see that happening because they have to live in those neighborhoods. And I had lived in the inner city down there. And you know, some of the grandmas, they don't have cars. They have to be able to walk to where they get food. People understand that, okay? Yes, yeah, some people from the community went rogue, but really it was caused by outsiders. A lot of them were college-age white folks from the suburbs, most of them college-age women from the suburbs, okay, that identify themselves as liberals, okay? So they are so out of sync, and they're losing as a result of this, okay? And you guys have seen that the minorities are shifting their votes to the Republican Party now because they see what's going on. Because, you know, we're at a point in time where it's like, hey, don't leave the plantation. You got to vote for me if you ain't black. <laughs> you know, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black kind of thing, right? You guys understand that? So their tastes are different, of course. The white uber liberal class strives toward the chichi. I don't know what that is. And they hip in entertainment, foods, recreation, etc. Racial minorities who are disproportionately members of the working class tend toward blue-collar choices on these things rather than lining up with their professed protectors, okay? Divergence of taste is mirrored by a gulf on more substantive cultural matters. African Americans, Asian Americans, and Hispanics tend to be more conservatives on education and to an extent on marriage, family formation, and church going. And these disparities of taste and culture are increasingly replicated in politics, which is why racial minorities have been sliding away from Democrats over the past four election cycles. A 2019 poll taken after Northam was revealed to have won Warren Blackface or a KKK outfit in his youth found that white voters were more upset about it than black voters were. Fewer than half of the former thought Northam should stay in office, whereas 60% of the later were content to see him remain. On racial matters, whites are akin to religious converts, more fervent than those baptized in infancy. <laughs> As the New York Times reported at the time, liberal whites, not minorities, are setting the tone on these issues. The same story revealed that white Clinton voters unlike black Clinton voters or Trump voters of either race, felt more warmly toward minorities than they did toward their own racial group. In this, they're like the lily white would-be African-American Rachel Delazay. 
Uh, the left is the awkward, is in the awkward, not to mention arrogant position of thinking it knows better than minorities what's good for them. And we can see this too with like the voter ID laws, right? Well, you know, it's just, it's terrible for minorities because, you know, blacks, they don't have IDs and they don't know how to use the internet. Okay, they, they, they insult them and say that's why they need their protection. So get back on the plantation, folks. Okay, that's really... This is what's going on. Thus, Democrats push to defend the police in direct opposition, push to defund the police in direct opposition to the wishes of the African Americans who suffer most from theft and violent crime. And again, going back to my friend, the police officer, he's consistently approached by different minorities down there, and they thank him for doing the work he does. And he's a white guy. Okay, and this this whole race thing is just a design of the Democrat Party to divide Americans. Okay, and we don't need that. We just love each other. How's that? Okay. Um, oh yeah, here it is. The party's suggestion that racial minority uh, people cannot get and use ID cards just as easily as others is recognized by minorities themselves as what President George W. Bush called the soft bigotry of low expectations. Huh, a good quote from President Bush. Look at that. Anyways. Even a blind swirl can find a nut sometimes. A 2018 study found that liberals' patronizing attitude towards racial minorities leads them even to dumb down the way they talk to members of racial minority groups, which is something to which conservatives do not stoop. Yeah, they, uh, seriously. And you guys have seen Kamala Harris do that. Hey, y'all. You know, we go help you out now. Hmm. We're here. We are here to help you, you know, to save you from the evil Republican. Uh, yeah, she's... Uh... Anyways, one should not be surprised that the left's leaders and ideologues are out of step or that they think hoi poli, what is that, should do what they are told and accept things they do not believe. This is the way they treat all ordinary Americans. Okay, they could dumb this article down. I don't know why, please. But on the issue of race, this knowing better than thou attitude sits particularly uncomfortably for it smacks strongly of the paternalistic arrogance of colonialism that, in theory at least, the modern left detests. Remember, Barack Obama was supposed to be this anti-colonialist, colonialist, yet the whole Democratic Party are colonialists. Okay, Um the similarities are, however, as evident as the differences between them and the late Victorian colonialists. Like those colonial officials, they regard themselves as altruistically governing lesser peoples, not as they wish, but for their ultimate good. We have seen that play forth so much during the Biden administration. Hey, take your medicine and shut up, right? They regard the lumpen populace as new-caught, sullen peoples, half devil and half child, as Rudyard Kipling wrote of British colonial subjects in The White Man's Burden. Nothing could be more unfashionable today than this 1899 peon to imperialism, and yet is not difficult to adjust a few details of the poem to capture the arrogance of today's left, and yet remain faithful to Kipling's original sentiments. Does this not ring true of those who currently run Washington, the universities, and most of the national news media? Take up the liberal burden. Go teach the leftist creed. Send out your pseudo-scholars. Our captive people need the care of justice warriors who will plant the good woke seed. Today's left has become the thing it hates. Don't think it's different for a second, folks. These people are... are you look back on the people who were heralded by the left, uh, these former members of, you know, the white supremacist groups, you know, uh, and whatnot. It's, these are not good people. They do not really have their best interests in mind. Hey, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and uh, check out LumberjackLogicShow.com for the best conservative merchandise. I love y'all. Peace out.